Hi, and welcome back to SAT Biology Review. I'm Liz, and today we'll be, we'll be learning about cellular respiration. So this is lesson four. We're learning about glycolysis, fermentation, and aerobic respiration. So cellular respiration. In life, organisms must capture and harness energy from the environment and then use this energy to function. So what is this energy and where does it come from? Well, organisms eat carbohydrates and fats, also known as lipids, that contain chemical energy. Through digestion, organisms trap that energy in a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, or also known as ATP. ATP is then used by cells to do activities that need energy to happen. These processes that need energy won't happen on their own. Without energy, molecules would tend towards oxidation and a loss of structure. Life uses the energy from ATP to power all the uphill reactions necessary for survival. So basically, cellular respiration, as we mentioned at some point, uh, the cellular respiration is basically the capture and the transfer of energy from food to ATP. And then we use this ATP to fuel, cells, to cell the, uh, to fuel the cell's chemical processes so that life can happen. So ATP. ATP is made of the nucleotide adenosine and three phosphate groups. So a triphosphate because there's three of them. Each phosphate has a negative charge which, and these negative charges repel each other. Having three negative charges so close to each other uh, stores a lot of energy. So ener this energy can be released by splitting apart the triphosphate grouping. So remember that an adenosine group, well, adenosine is made up of an adenine nitrogenous base and a ribose sugar. See here, adenine ribose triphosphate group. So this is aden adenosine triphosphate. So when you split apart this triphosphate grouping, you get something called adenosine diphosphate. If you split up another one, you'd end up with adenosine monophosphate, but we don't really see that very much. So energy is stored um, when these bonds are also formed. So energy is released by splitting apart the triphosphate grouping. You can store energy by bringing the groupings closer together. ATP is made in humans and organisms using a common set of biochemical reactions including glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport, starting off with the glucose. So basically, um, uh, ATP is necessary for all living things to be able to function, and it's made in, in the cell, in the human body, all of these things. And we all use glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport, and this all starts off with glucose. So we get all of our energy from glucose and we turn that into ATP, which we can use later. Glucose is present in the blood, taken in by the cells, and enters the glycolytic pathway as the first step towards making ATP. So again, we eat the glucose and then it's present, we digest it, it's present in our bloodstream, and then it's taken in by the cells and